had lions. He sat in the entrance. Anyone came without a uh, permission, lions had dinner. So now Moshe Rabbeinu comes with Aaron Cohen. lions are there. But Moshe Rabbeinu had the Shekhinah on him. Suddenly, the, all the lions, not just the lions that were at the gate, all the other lions came to Moshe Rabbeinu. All of them started following Moshe Rabbeinu like little puppies next to and coming to Paro. Paro saw, I was shocked. Why, what are these lions doing here? I, he's scared of the lions. Paro is scared of the lions. What are these lions doing here? And they're all friends with Moshe Rabbeinu. But then the Midrash, the Midrash says something fantastic. Yalkut Raoveni says that one of the other reasons why everyone else was okay, but Paro was petrified of Moshe Rabbeinu. Petrified. Why? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, I'm going to make him like a servant to you. He's going to be scared of you. Why is Paro the most powerful king in the world at that time? Why is he scared of Moshe Rabbeinu? Moshe is not coming with an army. He's not a ninja, a samurai. Or, what, what, what does he do? What is he scared of? He says, every time Moshe Rabbeinu would come, suddenly, the Midrash Rabbeinu says this, suddenly, Paro would see Gehenom. HaKadosh Baruch Hu would show Gehenom. And what's happening in Gehenom and what's going to happen to Paro? What's going to happen to Paro in Gehenom? He starts seeing. And he's petrified, everyone doesn't see it. He's the only one that sees it. That's what Midrash Ruven he says. I'm just wondering, is it the 12 month game or was the eternal game? I'm not sure. But the point is, Rabotai, is that it's very, very important for us to know that there is a consequence for our actions. Just like there's a consequence for our actions if we don't perform well at work, that's like there's a consequence for us if we don't do good service for our clients. There's a consequence if, we don't, uh, if we're not good spouses, you're not a good husband, you're not a good uh, wife, you're not a good child, you're not a good parent. There's a consequence in everything in life. We also need to know there's a consequence of not listening to Hashem. But by not listening to Hashem, I don't mean, oh, violate Shabbat. No, no, I mean simply not aspiring to be a Ish Tzaddik Tamim. Not aspiring to be righteous, to be a Tzaddik or a Tzaddikah, and Tamim, and complete with Hashem. Because if you're not aspiring to be complete with Hashem, you're not aspiring to be completely righteous with Hashem, you're aspiring to do something else. And that something else is not a good destination. You have to aspire to be the best of the best. You may not get there today, or tomorrow, or even this year, or next year, but you have to aspire to be the best of the best. Because that's the only way you can assure yourself that every day, you're gonna try better. You're gonna try more. You're gonna do tshuva every day. You're gonna work on yourself. Because you're constantly trying to be better. But if you're okay with your neshama parked on neutral, you know, you're just like, you're gonna go with the flow, whatever's gonna happen, and guess what? Eventually, you get to a hill, and then you start reversing. No, I'm okay where I'm at. Well, Kadosh Baruch says, no, you're not gonna be okay soon. There's no such thing as a Jew getting better by not trying. You have to aspire to be Ish Tzadik Tamim, man or woman.